guys, this is Deepika from MyTutorialRank.com. In this tutorial, we are going to do an example related to an Apex transaction. So first thing what we're going to do is through this example, I will explain to you that inside of an Apex transaction, either all the operations will be committed to the database or if one of the operation fails in the transaction, then the whole transaction will be rolled back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, will create a validation rule for the lead record. After we have created the validation rule, then in through the developer console, we will write an Apex class. And through that Apex class, we will insert the account record and the lead record. And we'll try to insert one account record and two leads record. And one of the lead record will be will throw an error because of this validation rule. So this whole thing will be a part of a transaction. We are not going to, in the in Apex, you do not have to specify any keyword to make it as a transaction. So in since it is inside of a method, it will automatically become a transaction. So if one of the lead record failed and you have account one created successfully and lead one created successfully, because of the second lead which threw an error, the whole transaction will be rolled back. So let's go ahead and take this example. So first thing what I'm going to do is we are going to create a validation rule for the lead object. In order to create the validation rule, so let's say the validation rule is you can only create a lead record if the company is equals to my tutorial rack. If the company is not equals to my tutorial rack, then you should have, then it should throw an error saying the company cannot be other than my tutorial rack, okay? So here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a new validation rule and we will call this rule as lead company rule. So what is the error condition formula? The error condition formula is the company name should be my tutorial rack, right? So I'm going to go ahead and insert the company field. So this company should, if it is not equals to my tutorial rack, if the company is not equals to my tutorial rack, then in that case, what will happen is it should throw an error. So let's go ahead and uh, use the uppercase here so that we wanted to make sure the company name, if it is not equals to my tutorial rack, then it is going to throw an error message and the error message would be company can only be my tutorial rack. So this is going to be the error message. Hit the save button. So now what will happen is if you are trying to create a lead record, if you're trying to create a lead record, let's say the lead record is Deepika, last name is Alok, and then let's say the company is it's G Y H. So in this case, it should throw an error and it, the error should be this error that we just displayed because the company can only be my tutorial rack. So in this case, it should work because the upper case of this my tutorial rack would be this. And in this case, it will save successfully because the company name is my tutorial rack. So this is what the validation rule is. So what we're going to do is we're going to represent that if one of the record fails in a transaction, the whole transaction will be rolled back even though some the, there were some records which were successful. But since it is a part of a transaction, the whole transaction will get rolled back. So now we are going back to our developer console. And here, let's go ahead and create a new Apex class. And we will call this class as Apex Transaction Example. So this is the name of the class. And inside of this class, I'm going to create a static method. So here I'm going to say public static void. It's a return type. Insert. I'm going to insert a lead record and an account. So this is the name of my method. And it takes in the account name takes in parameters first it takes the account name as a parameter the second parameter is the lead name 
and the third parameter is the lead company. So it takes in three parameters and then what we are going to do here is we are going to create the account record by using whatever the username what the user has provided so if the name would be equals to whatever we have specified in this parameter so it will go ahead and create a new account record and then we are using this dml statement and we are trying to insert the account record then what we are doing is we are creating another lead record we are creating a record for the lead and uh, here the new lead is equals to so we have to provide the last name for the lead because that's a required field would be equals to whatever the user has provided here and the company would be equals to whatever the company the user has provided here and then we are going to insert the L1 then we are creating another lead record so we are creating an L2 here which is equals to new lead and here the last name would be whatever the name that the user has provided which is this lead name whatever the parameter the user has provided and the company in this case would be my tutorial rack and then here i'm going to say insert of l2 so all these three operations we have three DML operations here, right? We have three DML operations. First is insert account, right? Insert A. Then the second one we have is insert L1. And the third one we have is insert L2. So we have three DML operations here. Now, depending upon, and we are in this method, it's a static method, and we are passing three parameters, account name, lead name, and the lead company. So first thing what we are doing is we are creating a account record and whatever the name, whatever the name we have provided here would be used as the name for the account. And then we are using this DML insert operation to insert this record into the database. Secondly, if we go back to the lead record, if we go back to the lead object, you will find out that lead has two required fields. One is the last name field is required and the company name so we have to provide the value for the last name and the company name so whatever the company name you have provided as the parameter will be used as the company name and whatever the lead name you have provided will be used as the last name so then you're using the insert operation to insert lead then third time you are manually specifying the company to be my tutorial rack and the last name should be whatever the name that you have provided and then you're using this insert operation. Now, if you remember, we have a validation rule set on the lead object saying that if the company is other than my tutorial rack, then the lead, sh the validation rule will fail and you will get an error. So in this case, if I go back to my debug and I try to run this, and I try to call this Apex transaction transaction example this method from the transaction class insert lead and account and here I provide the account name to be let's say access bank this is going to be the account name the lead name let's say we provide the lead name as John that's the lead name and the lead company will call it as XYZ. Now here, what's going to happen is if you go back, we, I haven't run the example yet. So here account, there is no account with the name Access Bank. Okay, there is nothing we have created yet. New last week or new, let's say this week. There is only one account called Universal. Then here under the leads, if I go ahead and say today's lead, you have all these three. Once I execute this, the two operations will be successful. Which two operations will be successful? These two operations will be, this one would be successful and this one would be successful. But this one will be fail. This is going to fail. 
because in this case we are providing the company as xyz and this is going to fail but since all these three are part of a transaction nothing will get inserted into the database nothing should get inserted into the database because one of the operation failed so in this case if i go ahead and hit the execute button it is going to throw an error saying hey there is a validation exception big and if i go back and if i go ahead and look it up now in the account new of this week you do not see the new account got created even though there was no issue in that account object in that account record it still did not create it because it was a part of the transaction and one of the dml operation failed in that transaction that's why the rest of the operation did not got executed similarly it did not created the new lead record as well because even though the lead record this should have been successful this operation the operation of this one this operation should have been successful because the lead name was john was right company name was right but because of this operation failed the rest of the operations also rolled back now here if i change the company name to my tutorial rack in this case all the three operations will be successful because this time we are not going to get any validation rule exception and all the records will get execute all the records will get inserted successfully and we did not got any error now if i go back and if i go ahead and refresh it you will see a record got added the first one was the john with the tutorial rack and my tutorial rack that's right it got created the second one here because two leads records should be created right that's why and here in this new of this week you will see an access bank record got created it should have been created earlier too but there was an error in the one of the dml operation that's why the whole transaction rolled back this this is a part of the whole transaction since we have we have written those inside of a method that becomes a part of a transaction and in a transaction according to the apex transaction definition everything inside of a transaction is considered as a single unit if one of the operation fails then the whole transaction will be rolled back so this is what the power of apex transaction is and you want to do that because you do not want to run into a scenario where you are transferring money from bank a to bank b and half of that operation was successful and half of their operation failed you still do not want the successful to get committed to the database because then there will be an inconsistent state you want to make sure if one of the operation fails in that transaction then the whole transaction should be rolled back so we have a consistency in the database this is an example of an apex transaction and how things are done in a single unit in the case of apex transaction